Good day everybody, it's Jerry from Backcountry Ranch and welcome to another video. And of course, the weather, once again, had to ruin a camping trip, which means I ran some errands and of course, had to spend some money on some things that I'm going to need in the future. First thing I picked up was from Princess Auto, are these four pack plastic ammo boxes that I'm going to use for storage for my overland adventures instead of using the totes i got now i'm going to downsize some things that i don't use if i haven't used it in like two years odds are i'm never going to use it it's actually a pretty good buy it's supposed to have a seal yeah it does have a seal so you got two ammo crates and then Inside this one, there's another. So both, I got like eight totes, but really I just bought it for the big ones. And then these ones are kind of a bonus. And these were the items from Cabela's that I picked up. Of course, picked up some extra toilet waste bags because no one likes seeing other people's spot where they took a dump when you're out in the bush. I think that's disgusting. That's becoming a real problem in the backcountry right now. People need to start using some portable toilets or burying their their poo. And picked up this Gerber multi-tool. Add to my bushcraft kit. And then I picked up this because I thought it was interesting. Tinder maker with fire starter. I got so many different types of fire starters now. I need to actually do something with them and start making fires. And I picked up this, this pack saw. Now I do have a silky saw, which is a little longer blade than this, but I like the idea of this and figure I'll give it a try in the bush, whether something like this, how it compares to the silky saw. We'll return to that in a later video. However, what this video is about is upgrading the axles in my 2003 TJ. If you guys haven't been already following this project, I did an LS Vartex swap. I did a Ford 8.8 .8 rear end. And I recently put a truss on my Dana 30. And I'm having regrets about that, which I discussed in a previous video. And since I'm going to 35s, I'm going to be pushing these axles to the limit. But I don't do anything stupid, so I shouldn't have any problems breaking them. Because a lot of people run really hard that I see around here on Dana 30 on 35s. And they seem to be okay with stock axles. However, these are the axles that I picked up to go along with these Jeeps instead of using the factory ones. I actually picked up these Yukon axles off Amazon for a killer price given the inflation today. I think I paid like... 650 bucks Canadian or other shops were charging a few hundred dollars more and of course I've uh, already opened up the package to make sure that everything is in there so to speak some things have fallen out of its package we're gonna get these things out of the box it does come with a seal kit I didn't replace the seals because the TJ needs two seals like this one here and the kit has these other ones because it's made for numerous applications so I didn't go that route got two sets of u-joints now because I originally was going to rebuild the factory ones but then this deal came up In the box, this is everything you get. I just noticed that they aren't machined, so they use a special type of U-joint that uses these half clips. So, in my LS swap conversion for the TJ for specialized parts, I'm making a list of all those parts. Let's get one of these assembled. Let's get this small one together first. Get that out of the way. So I know 
how much of a pain that's going to be. Take those caps off. Getting close. Alright, so typically, do I have enough? Or do I need to come a little bit more? Do I have enough? It's hard to say, I think I might need to come a little bit more. Just a little bit more. See if I can carefully put that one in now. Get that clip, slide it in place. Come on. Whoops. Got the space now. Yeah, slid her in. And then I'm going to push the clip around to the back side. This time around, I am going to do the long shaft first, just because I feel that it's going to be the hardest to do. that Put it in place come in out and as such Where's the clip? Where's the clip? Where'd they go? Where did they go? They were just on top. They're right here. That wasn't too painful. Let's get these installed. Both axles are in. All my bearing hub tools, dust shield. Fresh unit bearings I purchased probably well over a year ago. I'm going with Timken this time. The first time I installed wheel bearings. Over a decade ago they were no name overseas. But they lasted so we're gonna go with these ones. Spending all that extra money. Might as well go with one of the best bearings. Rain's starting to come down now. Yard's full of dandelions. Got a jug of Killax right here. I've been spraying down. It's like half full now. I don't know if it's working all that well.
torque them. So now before you put that together, you gotta make sure you have the washer, little wave washer, and of course the nut in that piece. Torque it down to 150 pounds. There we go. Got the torque. Put that wave washer on. Put that on. Goes over top of the nut. This is a new. Ten miles too long. I'm going to cinch it up. So that's supposed to help prevent the nut from loosening off. Because that would not be good. I learned the first time I took my Jeep apart. I was trying to figure out a way how to press this off. And one of the ways that I did is that I put a gear puller on this flange and against the axle there. And I actually pulled the bearing apart. So, and it came apart pretty easy. So if you're ever out and you bust your drive shaft, make sure you leave this little stub in. I'm actually probably going to make one later on just to keep it in there just in case something like that ever happens. I need to clean that with brake cleaner, get the brake assembly on. Now I'm going to show you a little trick because once you remove a set of brakes, you're not changing the brakes, but you're putting them back on. You're going to find that it's pretty hard to get them back on. You need to push that caliper back. And sometimes messing with the outside brake doesn't work. So that's where a Bessie clamp comes in handy. Because the Bessie clamp has that flat spot. So then you just, just going to line it up with that top of that bolt. Oops. And then... I'm just pushing it in. There we go. I probably got spread more than enough to get it on now. Probably not too often you're going to see a pink snap on ratchet. Bought it years ago. Nobody would buy it. It was on the truck for a long time, so I got a killer deal on it. I don't care what color it is fine tooth ratchet I don't buy any brand name tools anymore it's crazy that over the years I probably spent fogging up here it's humid inside I probably spent like fifty thousand dollars in work tools where making shit wages in oil and gas now I got myself a food processing our food factory job doing millwright maintenance all i need is all i take was like 150 dollars worth of tools and i'm making 41 dollars an hour 41 dollars an hour five days on five days off i need to put oil in the differential however first i need to lock the axle in the front because if I don't have that fork in right I just engage the locket right there I'll be doing it all over again so make sure yeah 
Looks like I'm tight on the other side. Looks like I'm tight. Yep. Yeah, she's locked in. Disengage. Disengaged. Yeah, so have to back it up. We're good, put oil in. Just going through, checking everything off. All the little things. This is a great add-on I did a long time ago, are these outer seals. I'm just gonna grease them up now. I can't even tell you how much oil this even holds. It's nice that Amazon puts oil in these bags now. I think it's full now. That's what's nice about the bags. You don't need a funnel, anything special. Just push it in, squeeze the bag. And I usually always keep a bag with me, an empty one, in case I need to fill it up full of any kind of oils in a difficult spot. They work great. That is all together and completed now. Getting closer to getting out and driving this thing. Got new steering to put on. Got to get that tie rod figured out with the track bar. Need new sway bar links. Soon, very soon, I will be driving this. So this is the thing. A little bit of condensation in the beer cooler. So I reached in grab a beer from the back and I found some keystone in the back now the crazy thing is I don't remember the last time I even purchased keystone I wonder if this beer is gonna be skunked all right motherfucking beer time got some keystone see if this is gonna be still good or not Definitely was no uh, no fizz action there. It's a little flat, but it's cold. That's all that matters. Cheers, everyone. It's another project crossed off the list. Yukon Chrome Wally Axles. New Timken bearings. Filled a dip full of oil. Greased my outer seals. Put my vent tube back on. I don't think I'm forgetting to do anything. I need to do a check over, of course, before the end. But I'm making this a short video because I'm just going to try. Because the analytics say the average watch time is about 10 minutes. So I'm going to shorten the videos a lot and see if that makes a difference. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, post them below. And I'm hoping to get out in the very near future. Do some more solo camping. This weather will cooperate. Right now, it's pouring rain, and I should have been out in the bush right now, but good thing I decided not to go because I would have been miserable when I was more productive in the garage today, creating content, getting this TJ finished, and back on the road. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.